Knowing just this one thing, when you go to the grocery store this month could be the fastest way for you to stock your pantry full of unprocessed, nutritious ingredients that you already cook with every day. Which is why I'm here to tell you how much it's changed my grocery routine and take you into my kitchen where I can show you better than I can tell you. Now as always, you just can't show up to the grocery store without a plan. As usual, before each pantry chat, I email you your grocery guide with four recipes you can cut and tuck into your recipe box or binder. And that's what I'm reading from. If you leave home without this, the tactics that the grocery stores employ will get the best of your budget every time. Now remember, the reason you want to meal prep around these foods is that these are the crops that are abundant and readily available right now. And their prices are going to be the lowest due to reduced transportation and storage costs. So as I read this list, grind your gears and start thinking about what your preservation plan will be. Are you going to can it, freeze it, ferment it, dehydrate it, whatever, so that you have enough to last when you can no longer source it inexpensively or grow it yourself. All right, the vegetables that you want to meal plan around this month include artichokes, arugula, avocado, asparagus, beets, bok choy, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, celery, collard greens, cucumber, endive, fennel, kale, leeks, parsnips, onions, potatoes, radishes, spinach, sunchokes, spring onions, sweet potatoes, and turnips. And the fruits that you want to meal plan around this month include apples, bananas, clementines, grapefruit, kiwi, kumquats, lemon, lime, oranges, pears, persimmons, strawberries, and tangerines. Now I'm going to tell you something that's a big deal, but most people sleep on. Did you know that March is frozen food month? That's right, darling. The frozen fruits I'm grabbing this month won't even hit my freezer because they're destined for the shelf to be fully cooked and ready to go. This month, your preservation skills are really going to pay off because other shoppers aren't thinking like us and they can't do what we do. This month, I am grabbing a number of our favorite fruits, making a simple syrup and then putting them in a hot water bath. That's right, I'm creating my own canned fruits that I can use for morning smoothies, fruit bars, ice cream or oat oatmeal toppings, jams, spreads. And yes, I'll admit it, canning frozen fruit feels like one of my cheat codes. But think about it, frozen foods are picked when they're ripe, unlike out of season fresh produce. So the taste is absolutely delicious. And then you completely skip the step of peeling the skin, slicing, dicing, chopping. I mean, the food is immediately ready for processing. So if you're new to canning or canning curious, starting with frozen foods is a great place to start. Let me show you what I mean. While summer peaches are still a season away, taking advantage of frozen food month means that I can start restocking the inventory we've eaten through over the winter months. Using frozen foods means I don't have to wait to blanch my peaches and then remove the skins and then wait for them to cool so I can slice them. Nope. All I have to do is open the bag, dump them in a pan, and combine brown sugar, cinnamon, a bit of vanilla, and hot water. Then let everything come to a rolling boil on the stove for several minutes just to ensure that the peaches are fully defrosted and cooked throughout. Yeah, the prep is really just that simple. And before you know it, you'll be ladling your peaches and that delicious simple syrup into jars. Now I also bought some mango because I figured I could use the same simple syrup from my peaches, repeating the steps that I just shared, and that I have about a total of six quarts when all is said and done. Fruits can be safely canned using a boiling water method because they contain sufficient acid. You'll want to add enough water to cover your jars by at least an inch, and then bring the water to a boil, and let that boil for 25 minutes if you're using quarts, or 20 minutes if you're using pints. Oh, that last jar is filled with the extra simple syrup, which I love canning to flavor ice iced tea or my homemade kombucha with. I don't just use frozen food month for fruit, I grab veggies too, like collard greens, spinach, and mixed vegetables. Since I already have cans of Christmas ham on the shelf, this dish starts with the unmistakable flavor of ham broth and hefty sized ham portions added to a pan. I mean, look at how beautiful these chunks are. Then you simply dump in your collard greens, which have already been cleaned and chopped. Then you'll give everything a good mix and bring to a boil for a few minutes. Then you're gonna wanna let things simmer for about 10 minutes so that the flavors have time to meld.
I actually needed more broth, so I'm adding more ham stock that I already had sitting on my shelf. Now, since greens cook down so much, the volume I have to use if I canned fresh greens would be a lot, but using frozen makes prep a cinch. I went back and added some onion and a bit of minced garlic. And let me tell you that these greens had the flavor of crock pot greens that have been just simmering all day long. And you know I'm not kidding because the ingredients I used were already robust in flavor. These will be perfect for Sunday dinner and collards are one of my dad's favorite veggies. <laughs> Now, your vegetables need to be pressure canned, which is the equipment that I'm using to preserve these. Another frozen food favorite I can this time of year are mixed berry fruits. These are perfect for pies or jams, but I almost always use these jars for summer smoothies or homemade fruit popsicle bars. Now, when you can berries, they will get soft, but that doesn't matter if it's headed for a blender anyways, and your flavor is going to be just fine. Keeping the fruit that I'll use for summer smoothies canned instead of frozen means that the only thing I need to keep in the freezer are my frozen ripe bananas. Then, you know, I'll add some milk or yogurt, a jar of canned fruit, and then maybe some other health ingredients, and my smoothies are done. Again, everything is washed, the stems are removed, so these projects come together quickly and keep the kitchen clean. As you saw earlier, I even keep the extra simple syrup because let me tell you, this mixed berry fruit juice tastes delicious and it does not need to go to waste. Fruit concentrate drinks are expensive at the store or contain much more sugar than I would want in them. So having my own flavoring agents is a great way that I get to have gourmet flavors at the ready. And oh, March is an excellent time to get ahead of the soon coming canning supply frenzy. If you're a canner, you know what I mean. But please avoid buying your lids from online retailers like Amazon because there are a lot of scam companies out there and the lids don't seal. I only use Four Jars, which is a family owned company known for their high quality canning supplies. You can use my code FARMGIRL10 to take 10% off your order. <music> gracious, who wouldn't want these jars sitting on their shelf? If this is our first time meeting, hi, I'm Cassandra from the blog, becomingafarmgirl.com. I'm here to help you start canning and preserving your own ingredients from scratch, then show you how to make delicious meals your family will love. You can get my free monthly grocery guide delivered straight to your inbox by clicking the link in the description box below. I'm not done with frozen food month just yet. I also like to grab bags of mixed peppers and onions to create my own meat meal starters, because all you have to do is layer the bottom of your jar with peppers and then add your meat like chicken or beef. Place your lids on top and then add them to a pressure canner. 75 minutes for pints or 90 minutes for quarts. These jars will end up being part of Taco Tuesday or chicken enchiladas, a chicken cornbread bake, fajita soup. I mean, it's a classic combination and being able to assemble jars in just minutes makes this a prep that I enjoy putting in my pantry. Now, as you can see here, I'm pressure canning on one burner and water bath canning on the other, even on a weeknight. Now, while March is frozen food month, truly anytime you see frozen veggies and fruits on sale, grab a few bags and know that you can quickly pad your pantry with ingredients your family already enjoys eating. And you don't even have to worry about those foods ever needing to actually go in the freezer. Broccoli is also in season and extra delicious tasting this time of year. While many folks remove the stems and just eat the crowns, try making broccoli rice so that there's no waste. Yep, you just pulse everything in a blender. And then what I like to do is ferment a portion of it to use on salads or save it to cook with later on. And then I'll refrigerate the portion that I plan to cook with in the coming days. Fermented broccoli is so good. Just add a pinch of garlic, unrefined sea salt like Redmond's, unchlorinated water, and then submerge everything down with a weight.
Do you see this asparagus sale I caught the other day? A bundle of fresh asparagus for $1.99 a pound? Girl, I grabbed three or four of them, and even though our Easter meal is still a few weeks away, I'll just ferment them as a way to keep their crunch until I need them. I hope you can see that the food preparation I've shown you is only possible because the foundation of my kitchen uses preservation systems and seasonal sales. I wouldn't have it any other way. I get to keep prepackaged box foods out of my kitchen, control the amount of salt, sugar, and other ingredients in my food, and can proactively plan to keep food from spoiling on me because I didn't use it in time. Canning, dehydrating, and fermenting are powerful practices that ensure you make the most out of the food you buy or grow and allows you to play an entirely different game than others at the grocery store. Okay, let's circle back to the broccoli rice. If you have small children or have a friend or family member that can't take the fibrous texture of broccoli for us, broccoli rice is an excellent option. You basically just add it to a pan, season with butter, garlic, and add some salt and pepper. It's gonna fluff up nicely for you. Now, in another small pan, I had some beef strips cooking and I added some sliced onion. I made a delicious meal of seasoned steak over broccoli rice with onions. Maybe your husband will be like mine and find the broccoli rice, for whatever reason, more agreeable than steamed broccoli florets. And oh, this meal is also entirely keto. Y'all know that I am a huge winter squash fan. I think I've included a recipe for them in nearly all of my fall and winter pantry chats because they store easily for months. Um, they're a value buy, they're nutritious, they taste delicious, and they can be paired with a number of seasoned sauces, meats, or veggies. This month is no different. This recipe combines two of my favorite, spaghetti and butternut. And then I created a simple sauce that's on the light side. I made a brown butter sauce and then I just folded in some goat cheese. I think you'll like it. Check it out. Now if you want long spaghetti strands, be sure to cut your squash widthwise because the strands grow in a circular pattern which won't cut against the grain. I like to use a silicone baking mat to roast my squash at 400 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, so I have this other butternut squash that I'm going to dice up. Remember that the skin of butternut squash is edible and becomes super tender with a subtle sweet flavor that I can't imagine tossing out. I'm going to add the squash to a baking dish and then I'm going to drizzle with olive oil and massage that over the squash. <laughs> grab some seasonings. I'm using a little bit of garlic powder, chili powder, cayenne pepper. I'm trying to go for something that's a little like just subtly spicy. Um, cinnamon, salt and pepper, and then I'll add that to the heated oven as well. So while the squash bakes, let's create a simple butter sauce. And for this, I'm just taking a stick of unsalted butter and letting it brown before I remove it from the heat. Then I'm gonna fold in some goat cheese and a little bit of milk, a splash of chicken broth that I had on hand, a little bit of salt and pepper just to create a thin but very flavorful sauce. My squash is now ready, so I'll remove it from the oven. Oh, doesn't that look good? I'll transfer my squash to the saucepan and then I grab some corn to combine or just add some texture to the dish. This is homemade corn, which is my favorite veggie. <laughs> and I am so proud to have clustered kernels like this, showing that I shucked it myself this summer. All right, the spaghetti squash is ready too, and I'm trying to show you, albeit a little clumsily, how long and unbroken the strands are when you cut it widthwise. I also decided to fold in some home canned mushrooms just because I love mushrooms. <laughs> and then I dumped in a small jar of red peppers. 
here's what the final creation looks like, which I must say ain't bad for a meal that gives you a lot of flexibility with flavors and ingredients. It's packed full of vegetables, is very filling, but won't weigh you down. What earlier I shared to grab tons of fruits and veggies during frozen food month, don't forget the ice cream, which is a treat around here. So I decided to make bananas foster and this recipe is in your grocery guide. I'm starting by greasing a baking sheet lined with parchment paper and then you'll need the whites of two medium or one extra large egg. And to that, you're going to add a sprinkle of salt and brown sugar. Then you'll want to zest a fresh orange. Don't skip this step because it makes a world of difference. Remember, you don't need to zest down so that you can see the white flush because that imparts a bitter flavor. So keep your hand pretty light. After that, add some cinnamon, stir everything to combine, and then drop in crushed pecans and give it a good stir so that you coat them well with the mix. After the nuts are coated, you're going to need to drain off as much of the egg mixture from the pecans. So just suspend it over a mesh spoon for a minute or two. Then spread the nuts across the baking sheet and place in a warm oven so that they can get crispy for eh, about 10 minutes. Okay, now let's make our sauce. Start by melting butter with a little bit of vanilla, brown sugar, more of your orange zest and cinnamon. And then you're going to stir to combine until it looks something like this. Then remove it from the heat and add a splash of spiced rum. The alcohol cooks off, but you'll be left with an undertone that complements these savory flavors so nicely. Then take two very ripe bananas, peel and slice down the middle. <laughs> down to the sauce to simmer for about one to two minutes and then you're going to toss them to the other side oh my word the aromatics at this point are intoxicating honey i'm taking this pan straight to the table so i grabbed the ice cream that i caught on sale Vanilla is my favorite flavor, and Tillamook is an even rarer treat, but you'll dump a few scoops on top, and then you're going to add the roasted pecans and a little bit more orange zest, and just indulge. Y'all, we cleared this pan out in about five minutes. <laughs> Now y'all know that the end of March is an excellent time to poke around the clearance and clothing section for marked down winter goods. So now's the time to take inventory of things that have seen better days. And if you need to replace things like hats, coats, uh, gloves, shovels, uh, antifreeze, any of those kind of things, now is the time to go ahead and grab them when they're marked down so that you can avoid paying full price and what will feel like <laughs> just a few short months from now. So I found some long johns that were marked down half off to now $9. And then I found these house socks. It was a pack of four that were marked down to $4. And then as I looked further, oh my goodness, I came across Moreno wool ankle support socks priced at $4 too. I mean, this was a really, really good price. So I continued to walk around the department and I found these super plush socks that were also marked down to $4 for a pack of two. I am telling you, I chronically shop out of season because you get the most bang for your buck. So when I found these really nice socks, I mean, they're thick and plush and they have uh, the grippies here that I really like. Well, they were marked down to $4, so $2 for a pair of socks. These are going to pair really nicely with, y'all know that I always do my Christmas shopping, um, like the days after Christmas when things are marked down. And now I can actually just toss these in my little Christmas box because I don't immediately um, need these. And the thing that I have, I already did that haul and I showed you, I had like, um, some like uh, wax melts and some really nice mugs and just a cozy thing, right? Oh my goodness, again, I'm going to be giving out holiday gifts that are a total of like three and a half or four dollars that will not look like that at all. But I mean, look, this is proof positive. 
positive. Y'all see what I'm hauling? And then I, oh, <laughs> oh my goodness, God, it's so good. I just love these. So a couple of years ago, I started um, just really learning more about my fabrics and especially merino wool. But you know what? It's, it's worth the price that, you know, they charge you for because it's a superior fabric. But you know, it's kind of pricey. So that's why I got so excited. I have, I think like four pairs of um, socks that I had also found on clearance at REI, but they are so nice. They definitely are my preference. They really hold well to your feet. They wick uh, away moisture. I'm on my feet as is uh, my husband for hours uh, throughout um, the day. And I just, Merino wool is a fabric that is super, super nice. And so when I found these, I'm gonna actually give a couple of these to my mom um, when I see her over spring break. But these are nice, y'all, $4, $4. Now you have to know how to, I just use a little, um, what do you call them? I guess it's like a little mini um, laundry bag, like a delicates bag, because I just air dry um, these socks and then you just wash them um, in cold water in the wash. But oh my goodness, this is how I am able to slowly just start replacing items that I have with better quality items without breaking the bank. So this is just such a blessing and you're gonna find, like now's the time to be searching for this stuff, right? Like everybody's thinking, oh, warm weather, all this kind of thing. Before I know it, and I actually, since I work in an air conditioned building and I just get cold easily, I can easily wear socks like these, you know, all year round. So poke around the clearance section, you, never know what you're going to find, whether it's for you or someone else or something that's coming up. Um, that's really a way that I'm that I'm able to offset, you know, our budget and have kind of punch above our pay grade by shopping the clearance section. So I, I've really been in a slump this month, y'all. So I have really been in a slump this month, y'all. Even when you can anticipate change, it is still something that takes getting used to. Let me bring you up to date in case you didn't catch my January candid chat. So my husband and I have lived in our townhouse for going on eight years, yeah, seven going on eight years. And what I can say is that there are truly some great folks in this cul-de-sac. And just here and there, I've been able to sprinkle in snippets of how much these folks really do mean to me our neighbors to the left, her daughter walks our dog Thor for his midday walks during the work week. And our neighbors to the right, Stan and Sheila, have been in this community for over 25 years. And then on the very end, our townhouses are like in clusters of four. But um, Kevin and Monica moved in a month after Trey and I moved here. And, you know, we've watched um, their children grow up and they're just... They're really good people. And I've been able to share with you how we have bonfires together and cookouts and dinners. And, you know, we all know each other's family and extended families. We're on group chats and my dad <laughs> is in, you know, on the chat and Monica's mom. And, um, you know, we really look out for each other in a way that I don't take for granted. And you become so accustomed to it that you don't you don't immediately think that it's going to change. I mean, it is nothing for me to walk over to Monica's house just a few short paces, I think it's like a total of seven, in my slippers, um, or vice versa. And I just, I mean, great neighbors isn't something that you're guaranteed to get. Which is why when Monica announced that they were expecting their third, another boy, I can't tell you how equally strong, I felt two emotions. The first was pure excitement for them. I love their two littles and I know that they wanted to expand their family and they're just, they're awesome parents. And so I was so excited for them. But then um, simultaneously, I also, I felt sad because I, I knew that they would be leaving because, um, you know, our townhouses have three bedrooms and, you know, you can make it work here, but um, I knew that it would likely be the time that, um, that they would be looking for another house. And I wasn't wrong, they found another house and please do not get me wrong, 
Kevin and Monica know that I am so happy for them, but I, I will just miss this family because I've watched their kids grow up. I'm so used to seeing Caden's trucks and cars just in my own front yard. I go on walks with Monica in the neighborhood and um, as a person that really appreciates and thrives off of um, routines, it will just, it will just be different because, um, you know, I, we, we deeply care for them. And over these last few months, I've shared with y'all how she's becoming a farm girl too. It was just in October when she harvested her first quail right here in this kitchen. So when you zoom out on my story, what I am sharing here is how a regular person is trying to graft themselves into a homestead lifestyle over what will be many years. It feels like it's a very, you know, average story. It's not going to be something that we build quickly towards. We're taking our time. And one of the things that has just crystallized even more for me through um, how I feel with this family um, moving is the importance of uh, community. And that's something that I've always said, and I've known it's important because of the relationship that I have with them. But now that like, that moment that you think is a little bit further off is here, I realize how important the community of people that you have and your neighbors truly are. And I know that truly when we move, it's not like the homestead, you know, farmhouse or even the land. It is who is around me because you don't do life on your own or you know, if you are, it's just so much more difficult and being able to, I talk about a lot where I'm not trying to be self-reliant. I want to have community resilience where we all have, um, you know, support from the other because that is what I have here right now and why I don't want to rush into something where I'm not as certain um, as I can be with that. Because one of the things, um, very honestly, why I feel so, you know, uh, safe and I appreciate these people around me so much um, is that as a Navy spouse, there are times with my husband's work schedule where, you know, he's deployed and so he might be gone for several months or weeks or, you know, several days um, at a time. And I have people that have, you know, the key to my house that will, you know, check in on me, um, my dog. They will fix things here, you know, around the house. If I need to even do things like finagle getting uh, an oil change, which can take hours, and then am I taking off of work and all these things, I don't have to worry about that because I have neighbors that will say, oh, hey, Cassandra, yeah, like, we'll, we'll just drive you up, drop you off, come back with me. I just, I don't take any of that stuff, like, for granted, y'all. Um, but I just, and, you know, when my parents visit, they know there are so many people here. I'm, we're close with a lot of the folks here. I mean, we do still have some like, you know, younger people that are here that maybe, you know, aren't just kind of like out and about or you don't have pets or that kind of thing. But I, as soon as I turn onto my street, it starts feeling like home because of the faces that I see. And, you know, we all majority of the time have our front doors open and our pets are just, you know, staring out the window and all these things. And just hearing the sounds of the kids, I, um, like that's so, this is the first time when I was uh, talking to my husband about it, it's really the first time as an adult that we have experienced this type of community. I mean, in college you're living with a bunch of folks, <laughs> half of them are crazy. Um, in an apartment, it's so like transient that you're more kind of, who's this face? You know, that kind of thing. But here we have really settled and I just um, appreciate the people that I have had uh, in my life. And Monica and Kevin are definitely folks that um, have had a front row seat <laughs> to, to me becoming a farm girl. And um, I'm just going to miss them. Now for the Super Bowl, a couple of weeks ago now, um, Kevin had requested some of my uh, hot wings. And um, of course, I made them for him. I had these wings soaking in buttermilk for a few hours, which helps the meat to tenderize and also helps the breading to stick to the skin. So right now, I need to add flavor to the flour by adding some herbs and spices to it. 
And as I did this, I kept thinking about all of the meals that I've shared with Kevin and Monica. And as I did, I realized that because we've shared so many meals together and see each other practically every day, it's no wonder they've nestled in my heart. Wherever you are in life, I am telling you, count those blessings because they won't always be and could change in a blink of an eye. I've taken some extra time this month to help them work on house projects, especially because Monica is very pregnant at the moment, but also because it's just what we've always done for the other. While our relationship will transition, it will still continue to be just as special. And you know, I'm thankful that I still have many other friends in my neighborhood. Miss Fanny, whom I've mentioned a time or two, is one of the liveliest 75-year-old women that you will ever meet, uh, is one of them. Oh, let me point out that I am frying my chicken in bacon drippings, which has a high smoke point and imparts excellent flavor. Everything changes every which way you go. To what you need, and if I hide myself away, I will go with the world away. We can trust each other, always make things right. What is more important, love is all. Changes every which way you got to hold on to what you stay. All right, friends, I'm kind of feeling much better because Monica and I had some girl talk. Yes, we did. She showed me the house, and it's gorgeous, it has a gorgeous kitchen. And so we're going to use that for future photo shoots and canning. We'll have more than enough space Yes, in my cramped kitchen. I'm super excited about that. Yeah. You should have seen her reaction when she saw my kitchen. <laughs> I should have loved yeah. that. Yeah. I really have been sad all day. Yeah. I've been sad all day, but it's okay. Now. <laughs> baby in the kitchen. Oh, wait. Okay. That is, okay. Do we really need to get baby in the kitchen? Oh, probably. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Alright, oh, there's the baby. Oh, yes. What does it say? It says boy mom. Yes, I'm a boy mom. Oh, in my boy mom era. Yes, yes you are. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, girl, I gotta go home. The weekend before they were scheduled to move, we all decided to take a picture together so that we could remember the good times. Y'all, I'm really going to miss seeing the boys' trucks not in my yard. We were Stan, Stan, you have to. Sheila had everyone over for dinner and we chatted until almost 10 o'clock. <laughs> you know, let me circle around slowly one more time because my goodness, this journey I'm on sure has brought some incredible folks in my life. So anyways, a few days later, after they moved, it was my birthday, and Kevin and Monica and the kiddos stopped by and delivered a bouquet of flowers that they had personally picked and arranged. Ooh. I mean, aren't they beautiful? <laughs> So I told Monica and KJ, their second grader, that I would keep these flowers, that I will have them for life, which they know is not an exaggeration because I dry flowers and display them around my home. And so I truly will have these. I just, of course, like when they presented them, I just like fell apart again. I've done so much crying these past couple of weeks. I, I mean, it's been a little shocking you don't realize, even with, I just, 
I have really just been a, a wreck, a wreck. Anyways, I told Monica that I would help her plant some flowers and spread some mulch for their listing pictures. But then before that, then she was gonna take the kiddos, you know, back to their new house and Kevin was gonna stay and do some work. But I said, hey, like, do y'all just wanna have, you know, dinner over here? And so they did. And I just made a meal that Monica likes, some chicken cordon bleu and mashed potatoes. Uh, I think we had a goat cheese cranberry salad. And, you know, it just felt, it just felt like, Nothing had really changed. I packed up the leftovers this time in plastic since I'm not gonna get my Tupperware back anytime soon. And then we just stayed and, and chatted. Now don't worry y'all, it's not gonna be the last that we see of Monica. They're just about 35 or 40 minutes um, up the road. And she still wants to learn how to start canning, which is something that we had already slated for around the March timeframe. So uh, we'll likely do a video together where I'm showing her, you know, how to can, pressure can, um, actually. So that's going to be awesome. And then I was already going to have her set up in a green stock uh, this summer. She still prefers to plant in that now that they um, have a backyard. So we'll, we'll see Monica for sure. Now in other news, spring is here and for many of us that means it's the return of our gardens. So over the past couple of years, I've shared how I've taken a humble gardening space and turned that into an area where I can harvest pounds of fruits, vegetables, and herbs each week just by combining the use of vertical green stock planters and compact crops. Now my approach to gardening is not sophisticated at all, but I have leveraged the most important component of gardening, which is soil health. So years ago, one of my very first videos here on YouTube was how I maintain a worm bin and how I essentially create this ecosystem by feeding the worms my kitchen scraps and nothing has changed since. And this year, I'm gonna focus more on how I maintain the health of my garden using just organic inputs. I've created a 10 module video series that will show you how to start and maintain a worm farming system that's tailored to your needs. Whether you need a setup that is compact enough for your cozy kitchen, mid-sized for family ambitions, or even a large scale earthworm operation if you've got a few acres of land. This course will be running live this year as I take you real time behind how I create over 400 pounds of compost a year to fertilize my garden using just my kitchen scraps. Worm castings inoculate your garden from pests, disease, and provide nutrients for your plants, innately giving them what they need and how much they need. This course even has a workbook that's over 120 pages with illustrated diagrams, photographs, and references along with fun activities for the kiddos. Click in the link in the description box below to take a peek. To get more meal inspiration, click on the video on your screen. I'll see you in my kitchen or garden soon. Take care, friends. Mm -hmm.